My name is Daisy. I've been a potter since 2012, and my husband and I do pottery together. We have the King and the Flower Pottery as a business, and we are starting to develop our studio, Worthy Vessel Studio. The art form of pottery is creating vessels from your imagination, whether they be sculpted or uh, thrown on the wheel um, out of clay. You can see God's hand throughout every single part of the process from the very, very beginning up until the very end and, and throughout even the use of pottery. Pottery starts off as really something simple and pretty much worthless. Um, it's just as common as the dirt. Um, in Arizona, we can find it just digging in our yard. It's mostly clay anyways, right? Traditionally, a master potter would choose his clay very carefully, just like God chooses us. Everything is carefully chosen. I feel like individually, like especially after having children and seeing how special they are and how bits and pieces of who they are are there from the start. I can see how they are like little vessels that have been made by the master potter. And I just get to see the process like evolve. Um, so when a potter goes at the wheel, there's already been so much in choosing the clay in wedging the clay in thinking of what you want your creation to become that goes into it, there's already so much of that embedded into the process. When you're wedging, um, that's probably the roughest you will be with the clay. So you're taking a lump of clay and you're kneading it like dough, but instead of trying to introduce any air into it, you're trying to take out all the impurities. Just like through seasons, we see our own lives being wedged and us going through this process of like removing all the impurities, taking off all that sin that was part of our sinful nature, you know, and, and just like shedding everything that is holding us back before we even get started in the creative process. You see the clay kind of being thrown around on the wedging board and it doesn't look easy for the clay and it's not easy for the potter, it's actually like challenging for the potter and a really good potter who's done this for a while will create this lump of clay that's perfectly smooth and unified and is willing and ready to be thrown on the wheel. So there's no shame in taking your time in that process because what happens there is necessary to prepare the clay. Once you start on the wheel, it's really important to just stay centered, which makes me think of being centered in Christ. And like, if you, if you have a lump of clay that skips through the process of centering, you're gonna have something that's wobbly and it's not gonna stay in place. And beginner potters have a really hard time with centering because the clay doesn't want to stay in the middle. It, it requires a steady hand to keep it there. So you just, you have to learn how to, how to go back to that. And if you struggle um, as you're learning to throw, like it's just so important to go back to being centered, just like God likes often brings us back to Jesus, come back to the center so that we can be able to continue in that process of being made with a purpose and for beauty. Um, once it's centered, then the clay will be very malleable and very able to be lifted and raised and bent in the, the form that the potter has in mind for the vessel. Once you have your clay centered, you can begin to stretch the clay and lift the walls up. And there you see like when God's like stretching us and when he's creating us to like serve his purpose and one of the very beautiful things about clay is that there's nothing wasted. So even if in that process we fall apart, even if the clay completely, not just like falls apart, but like lands somewhere else in the studio, you can still pick it up and you can wedge it back again and create something entirely new. There is never anything wasted up until the firing process, which is, one, which is the final process. The clay is able to be recycled and given a new purpose and a new identity. And like I said, nothing is wasted. Throughout all of this, you see the potter's fingerprints all over the piece. I think one of the things I've been meditating on lately is how we cannot leave the hands of the potter. There is a 
a devotional that I was reading where this was brought up and I just kind of like clung to that, you know, and I thought about it and I'm like, even after, obviously before, like throughout the entire process, you have to be obedient to the potter, like the clay has to submit. If there's anything wrong with it, if it's too dry or if it's too wet, like it has to submit to the potter and the potter knows what to do to make sure that it becomes the consistency that it needs. Even after it's been fired, the purpose is there because the potter has given it a purpose. Every purpose that a vessel is given, it's just, it glorif it goes back to the potter, it glorifies the potter. Being in the studio and, and working with clay, it's just, I find so much beauty in the fact that even in every season, there is a purpose for it. And as long as we don't leave the potter's hands, we can be shaped into something that will glorify him.